guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm back here with my good buddy Eric Peterson. How's it going, Eric? Good, man. How are you? And how are you liking your Ruger American with Go Wild Camo? That's the official name. It is. I, I've absolutely fell in love with it. I put about 200 rounds downrange, um, just getting warmed up, and I'm loving it. So this is a 6.5 Creedmoor rifle. It's available at a low price point. We did a complete review video on this last time that you're mm -hmm. gonna wanna check out. We put it on the trigger scan, we put it on the scale. We put the Lyman bore cam down the bore and we did some shooting at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. And what did we find out? We found out some stuff after the fact. <laughs> we were having an issue with flyers yep. and, and a rookie mistake. I got home, I was setting the gun on the counter and I heard a little tink. And what I found was our rail was loose. Yep. And then we also found out from you all and mm -hmm. your comments that these inexpensive stocks tend to flex mm -hmm. and when you're loading the bipod, you can actually see your free float, float gap kind of shift around a little bit yep. and if it touches the barrel, it's all yep. over, right? Exactly, yep. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna continue kind of pimping this rifle out mm -hmm. and fine tuning it yep. and in this video, we're specifically gonna talk about optics. Huh? Monstrum Tactical. Okay, so I loaned you this Vortex mm -hmm. HSLR. This is a four to 16 by 50. Yep. It's a very common kind of power range and all that. It's perfect. But we're gonna go out to a thousand. We're gonna go out to a thousand. We need a little bit more magnification. Yep, and if you shoot PRS this year, you're gonna yep. want first focal plane as Absolutely. well, right? Absolutely, Absolutely, it's a must. Okay, now we are on a budget platform here. We are on a budget platform, so what I did was a lot of internet searching, hours and hours and hours, and what I kept coming up with was the Monstrum Tactical. Uh, I found a handful of really good reviews that were really helpful and helped me make a decision in my purchase. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of optics are imported from China. Yes. And this is an example of such an optic, but there's kind of some special things about this one. This one's pretty cool. Um, they offer three different colors, uh, the flat dark earth, the black and the olive drab green, which I thought was really neat. It also comes with an illuminated reticle, mm -hmm. which is helpful for low light condition hunting, which and we do. I have illuminated targets at 600 yards, <laughs> and I'll tell you without an illuminated reticle, that is really, really hard, because hard you're do. talking about a whole hillside and these tiny little yep. white dots. So, so it stacked up to all my needs. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a, it was a no-brainer. It's not a night force. It's not a night force. But from what we've heard, it holds zero and it tracks. And we're gonna actually test that. So make sure you continue watching this video. Absolutely. And make sure you subscribe because we're gonna have some follow-up stories as well. So this is this is the rifle that we're gonna mount the scope on. And why don't we get that box open All right. and see what we got. Okay. So this is about $250 street price? Yeah, so about $250. I found them online. There's three different series. There's the G1, G2, and G3. And I talked to Monstrum on the phone, and he told me, you definitely want to stick with the G3. It's their latest and greatest version. Mm -hmm. And they're very happy with the results they've been getting. And you got the FDE, which is nice. I did. Because you got the bronze Cerakote. Uh, exactly. And it kind of complements it with the camouflage. It just ties it all together. Well, if you look at the hills around here, we have a lot of that kind of sandy mm -hmm. loam, you know, yep. and anything that is south facing is just gonna be scrub brush and you got tan. Exactly. And when we're hunting coyotes and yeah, stuff like that, you that's be hidden. awesome. So what do we got here? So it comes with a couple different things. Um, they came with the rings, which I'm excited to check out. It came with a- Matching, that's matching. nice. <laughs> came with this little vent shade. Uh, I'm not sure that I'll use it, but it's kind of neat that it came in there. Mm -hmm. So this has got a kind of a honeycomb mm -hmm. and that's gonna direct the light. What else is that used for? I'm not really sure. I, I guess more research on that. Um, okay. I, I found a few people that said they like it, but I, I, don't, I don't think it's personally for me. I don't know that I'll use it, but it's neat. So here's the optic. So it's a 30 millimeter tube. 30 millimeter tube. Um, it's about 16 inches long. It weighs a little bit. I'd like to put it maybe on a scale and get an official weight. Mm -hmm. It comes with the cap, pop-up caps, which I really liked. Oh yeah. Pretty neat. Has Cause, the, Cause we're hiking. We're I mean, hiking. we're hiking in the snow, we're in the getting, dirt. Yeah, rain, storm, you trip yep. and fall, your lenses are toast. Um, it has a couple neat features. I like the lock in, lock out turret. Pops up, pops down. Mm -hmm. You can make your adjustment, snap it back down, and you're locked in. It's really great. The illuminated reticle on the side is now a dial instead of a push button, and you can control your levels of uh, light intensity from mm -hmm. bright to, to dark, and uh, it's a neat little setup. It's got the parallax on the side as well, and um, 
So, so speaking of the updated illumination control, this yes. is a Gen 3 scope. This is a Gen 3. On the Gen 2, it was a push button, and they were, uh, from what I read on reviews, they were having issues with moisture, uh, water, things like that uh, getting in there. So they updated this. Um, they said they've had a lot better luck and not nearly any issues with it. Mm -hmm. so. And so Gen 1, first round, first go for Monstrum. This is Correct. just recently, right? Like this is just recently. I think they're only a couple years old. They're okay. just, they're, they're a newer company. They, you know, got to start somewhere. Yep. And they came out with the G1, which, um, you know, got to start somewhere. Yep. Their G2 was a much better optic. And now this is their G3, which is their latest and greatest version. And, uh, so to go from G2 to G3, you're talking about $210 to $250 Correct. price increase approximately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they did redesign the internals. They did. Yeah. And they're all, all brass, brass internals yeah. instead of aluminum. Uh, agreed. Yeah. That's yep. what they said. And um, he said it's just an all-around better optic. He said they've had way better luck with it. So I really, I really think the overall fit and finish first impressions are really good. And we had a quick look through the tube mm -hmm. outside. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks. Uh, it looks really good. It does. The only thing I noticed is the when the reticle is illuminated, you can see kind of some of the edges are not mm -hmm. not totally uh, even in terms of illumination, but you can see the illumination really mm -hmm. well. Absolutely. And without the illumination, I think the reticle looks really really crisp and clear. It's a it's a. It was etched. impressive. I I was shocked when I looked through it. To yeah. be honest with you, you know you're you're looking at an optic under three hundred dollars. Most most hunters and and sharpshooters wouldn't even look at it. Yep. And uh, trying to keep it on the budget build, and I thought, let's let's take a peek. And when I opened it up and looked through it, I was, I was literally shocked. And so this does not have a zero stop. I think that's the only it's feature the that only I'd like feature. to see. On there. If they had a zero stop, I would just, I'd yep. be so impressed. But you can you can work around that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're looking at your elevation scale and whatnot. Yep. So we yep. pull it. I like the fact even that there is mm -hmm. the down and up, left and right. Yep. So that. Uh, you know, you always see that kind of on the top of the turret cap, mm -hmm. but if you're behind the rifle, you're going to want to see that yeah. so that you can dial from your prone position yep. or exactly. whatever it is. Exactly. Very cool. Very cool. So we've got this nice FDE tan color. Mm -hmm. We've got matching rings. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to have these a little bit lower. A I little noticed. lower. I, I agree. Uh, for, for this rifle. For this rifle. Th this is a universal application mm -hmm. ring and, you know, they have it set up for anything. So this will literally fit on any gun, but if you want to modify it, you're definitely going to want to put some lower rings on for, for our rifle. Yep. Okay, guys, this is the scope. We're going to get down and dirty putting this on Eric's rifle, and we'll see you guys out at the range. So we got the scope put on. We pushed forward on the ring bases while we were tightening the ring bases down to make sure that everything's mm -hmm. compressed like it'll be under recoil. We put our Loctite on the pick rail screws. Very important. Which Ruger does need to take note mm -hmm. of and mm -hmm. do from the factory. And then this time we're doing the plumb bob test. And that was a request from you all. And what you do is you get the body of the scope perfectly level with the ground plane. Mm -hmm. And then you hang a vertical line with a plumb bob. And then you look at how closely the reticle is aligned to the body of the scope. And it looks so far like we're within maybe a couple degrees? About maybe? maybe one or two. Check we're, out really, the we're really close. We'll measure it in post-production and yep. put that up. <laughs> yep. Okay, so what's next? Tracking test. Tracking and test. And sight in at 100 yards. Yep. So let's go out to the range. Let's do it. All right. So I took this out to our local gun club, did a quick bore sight, got it zeroed at 100, and we took it all the way out to 600 right after. So tell me, when you go to zero the turrets, mm -hmm. right, to set your zero point. What is the process like on the scope for that? Pretty simple, you can take this top cap off, you'll lift up, you'll align your zero with your uh, mark here and drop it right back down and it's the same process for the windage. So it, it's like a lot of the other scopes that I have, but you also have this feature here where you lift it to turn it and then you Correct. push it down so that it doesn't yep. turn. The lock in, lock out just helps you so you don't accidentally bump it while mm -hmm. you're out doing things. Uh, just make sure it stays, stays where it's supposed to stay. Gotcha. And you guys might be wondering what's up with all of these empty <laughs> bullets here, these empty bullet boxes. Well, it's actually been about four months since we did the first part, and you've got over 1,200 rounds through the gun. A little over right? 1,200 rounds through the pipe, yep. And about 800 ish dollars of yeah. components, yep. bullets, primers, powder. powder. Yep, yep, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've gotten hooked and yeah. a, a part of that has been since then you've also competed in your first PRS match, right? I, I did. I competed in the PRS match, the Finley Cup here in uh, North Central Washington. It was an eye-opener. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps underscore the need oh. for, for a good optic, right? Big <laughs> time. first focal plane optic. Big time. Big eye-opener. Yep. Um, 
you know, the PRS match, those, those optics are, are far beyond the capabilities of a standard mm -hmm. optic. Mm -hmm. And this optic on, on the plus side, it's very clear. Incredibly clear. It's really good. Not a lot of chromatic aberration, mm -hmm. good contrast, mm -hmm. really sharp detail through it. Mm -hmm. And we did the reticle alignment test. We mm -hmm. found a, a degree of misalignment that I would say is concerning. Yes, you can re-level the reticle, but if you can't the body of the scope to get the reticle level, now your windage and elevation adjustments have error of their own. Correct. So it's a bit of a splitting the differences kind of game. Correct. Uh, we also shot a couple of tracking tests, box tests. So this was the most recent one from this week. Correct. Yep. Tell me about what you did for this. So basically I took it out to 100. Uh, I made a box that is about, uh, supposed to be 10. 10.47. 10.47. Right. And uh, basically so what you do is you shoot a five shot zero, you bring it up five and go left five, take another five shots, mm -hmm. and then you go right five, drop down, all the way around to the box. The idea is to make a box and see what kind of error that you're gonna have. Or if mm -hmm. it's right on, then, then you're in good shape. Yep. And so what we found was uh, it should be 10.47 inches wide and 10.47 inches tall in terms of the box. And the box here isn't exactly no, those. it's 10. Those, it's, yeah. it's 10. Yeah, it's just But when reference. you measure center to center on the groups, we've got 12 inches for, for windage. And I think it was 11 and a half. For elevation. Yes, yep. for, for elevation. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, well, first off, the scope did a decent job tracking here because when you went back to zero, it yeah. it, it would have been good to have more shots. But I we can see we're, yeah. in the, we're in the yeah. right. We're, we're in the, the right, right territory. Yeah. I should have done a five shot. I don't yeah. know. The gun was getting warm. So tracking wise, things were fairly well on. But in terms of the accuracy of the graduations for elevation and windage, on the windage side, we had almost 15 percent, 14.61 percent mm -hmm. error. And uh, for elevation, there was about 10%, 9.84%. So what does that translate to? For windage, your, your air is 1.5 inches at 100, 9 inches at 600, 15 inches at 1,000, and 27 inches at a mile. That's significant. Uh, for elevation, that would be an inch at 100, 6 inches at 600, about 10 inches at 1,000, and 18 inches at a mile. Now, here's the thing. If you're just going to believe what your scope is telling you mm -hmm. and you've got all of your data in the Shooter app or the Straylock Pro app, whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to be off and you're going to be off big time. At long range. But you can compensate for the error because the error is consistent. Mm -hmm. So my takeaway is, and tell me if you think this is wrong, mm -hmm. this scope is for someone that wants first focal plane, rugged construction, mm -hmm. good features, good clarity, and is willing to work around the numbers to make sure that they can get on target. That's kind of my Absolutely. overall summary no, of this scope. That's exactly it. You nailed it. That's exactly what this is. And it'll go right onto an AR with mm -hmm. those higher rings. Now, you yeah. actually put some lower rings on I here. I did. It was, it was up there pretty high. I had to bring yep. it down a little bit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That helps with bore axis, mm -hmm. and it helps with your positioning behind Correct. the rifle. It did, a lot. Yeah. I mean, my head was up so high. <laughs> I had to yep. bring it down to a normal height. Yep. Yeah. But uh, you've taken quite a few rock chucks with this in the canyon? I right? shot a lot of rock chucks with it, and uh, we were shooting, I, I think my furthest rock chuck right now is, gosh, it was way over 600, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, I haven't had any issues. I haven't had a lot of misses, so I'm, I was kind of, shocked at the data, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, you know, I'd, I'll range something, I'll yep. get my solution, I'll dial it up and go, and I've had really good luck. Yep. So we're going to give this feedback back to Monstrum, because in my opinion, if the, if the tracking was accurate, mm -hmm. not just repeatable, but accurate, then it would put this scope into kind of a different category in terms Correct. of the value. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. So what are your, what are your future plans with this setup? What's next? I think... I don't know. I'm not really sure where it's going to go from here. Definitely not a PRS thing. Definitely a predator hunting application for me. How about big game? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'd love to take an elk or a bear with this rifle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you absolutely could. I mean, we've seen <laughs> the white paper that I published with Starlin. It has some great pictures of it does giant elk that have been taken with 6.5 Creedmoor. Big elk. Yep. Uh, I witnessed a bear be taken last year with a 6.5 yeah. Creedmoor. Yep. That was impressive. <laughs> that was me. That was this guy. <laughs> so. Um, I have a lot of faith in this cartridge mm -hmm. and this application. Yep. 
So the Monstrum Tactical, 60 to 40 bar by 50. This is generation three. It's, it's a good value. It does have some gotchas and some drawbacks. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. Mm. You've put so many rounds through this rifle now. We did the full review. You're going to want to check that video out. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys want to see a long-term update? Because uh, Eric Harris learned quite a bit about this rifle, and you've a actually lot. done quite a bit to it. Absolutely. I've changed a lot of things. The trigger. Trigger. The scope. Muzzle brake. The brake. Mm -hmm. And it even came with a brake. So it there's even a story came behind that. Exactly. Yeah, so if you guys want to see a long-term update, drop a comment. And uh, if we get enough interest, we'll, uh, we'll do a, a full yeah. video on that. Absolutely. But, uh, Thanks, Eric, for hey, for helping you. out with this. No, and it's been you, really man. fun to play with this. Yeah, and, it's been uh, good. Yeah. You are not going to want to miss what's coming up on Gavin Tube here. We've got a lot more 6.5 Creedmoor action. We've got a lot more optics action. So make sure that you're subscribed with notifications. And if you like this video, give her a thumbs up. Give her two or three thumbs up. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> but <laughs> <Try it. laughs> Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.